Okay, welcome everyone. Today is Magical Monday, November 16th, 2020. Wow, we were just talking about how the day, the years are going by, and I think that this year, it's like it hasn't, like we forget how fast, it's, it's like it hasn't happened this year. It's, it's been a very strange year. So, um, I, yeah, 2020, what an interesting year it's been. And so, um, I'm so excited for today's guest speaker. And I think that's why we have a lot of you on live, which is so awesome. <laughs> because I think many of you are very excited to hear her content. Um, you, we all watch, um, what she does and it's so exciting just to see the, results that she gets and now we get to hear how she gets them so i'm so um excited that she was able to jump on today because um i i actually just asked her like a couple days ago or like yesterday or something and she was able to actually clear her schedule and jump on so michelle i'm so grateful for you always um before we uh give the the floor to her though i just want to really fast um, just do a little bit of housekeeping really fast. I wanted to make sure that everybody's aware that we had a launch of a couple products. I hope that you were in your workstation this morning or hopefully before this morning, uh, between 9.30 and 10.30, we had the limited edition holiday hearth warmer. And um, just so you're able to make sure that your clients were aware of it, it was a, it's a pretty price point, um, which is good for you, for your sales. Sometimes we get a little hesitant and worry about the price points, thinking that it's too expensive because um, we tend to worry about it's expensive for us, so we think it's too expensive for our clients. We have to remember that people, um, you know, they want what they want, and if they like it, they will make it happen. And so um, never, never mark it with your pocket, if that makes sense. So it, all we have to do is just make sure they know what's available and um, they will make it happen if that's what they want, as well as the season wax collection. So um, the last time I checked on my website, uh, well, which was this morning, so I, um, I'm just, the wax collection is still there, and as far as the other one, I'm not sure. So I'm not going to take the time to. Uh, oh yes, I am. It's still there. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so if you haven't looked at your workstation and you did not uh, know about these two new items that launched this morning, you still have time to let your clients know. So you can go live and talk about them. You can go to the marketing tab and. Uh, market uh, and let um, share those those uh, sorry I'm just gonna go ahead and mute some people that aren't muted um, and share those on your VIP pages on your business pages and just let our company that has a marketing team that does that for us um, do the honors of marketing for us you know we don't join Sensi to because we have to have a marketing degree behind us um, under our belt. Utilize them as the resource. Um, yes, we nowadays have um, apps that we can add, um, you know, our website and our information and things like that, but don't let um, our kind of insecurities of like, you know, I don't know how to do cool graphics and this and that, because yes, there are some people that have um, somebody I know that's on my front line, she has a graphic design degree. So yeah, when you see her stuff, you're going to be like, whoa, that stuff is amazing. But that doesn't mean that you're not going to be successful. One of the most highest paid superstar directors in the company, there's a joke. Um, her name's Jen Audette. You probably have heard of her. She will tell you she sucks at marketing. <laughs> she, there's like a running thing. Um, if you go on the Thursday night fry, they talk and they make fun of her all the time that she's like horrible at, at marketing and at like graphics and stuff, but she sponsors like 15 people a month. Okay. So that just shows that, um, you could use what Sensi gives you. And, um, as long as you are just get your, getting yourself out there, 
Okay. So, um, yeah, so I wanted to just make sure that we were talking about that. And um, let's see, our, no our nozzles are back for our counter clean. That's a big deal because um, a lot of people were saying that they were getting sick of going to the dollar store and buying, um, stock buying up the, the dollar store squirt bottles. <laughs> um, but it was definitely well worth it to give that little extra touch and customer care for your clients while we didn't have that. If you didn't do that, that's fine too. Again, that's why Sensi gave the discount, right? Uh, a lot of companies wouldn't do that. They'd be like, sorry, COVID, plastic was out, not our fault, figure it out, right? But Sensi always does the extra mile, which is so amazing. And I know you guys know that, so. Um, all right, let me just do a couple, a little bit of numbers really fast, because you guys always like to know what's going on with our group um, so far for the month. We did, um, we're at the halfway mark. We're on the 16th, which is always exciting. Um, and we're going to do group numbers since this is a group call. Let me see where we're at. All right. So, so far for the month in our group, we are at, okay, so, um, for sales for PRV so far for the month in top sales is Amanda Bray, Superstar Consultants, which happens to be on Michelle's um, team, um, in Nevada for 5,027 in second place. Um, oh, sh I said Superstar Consultants. Brittany Levine is a director in New Jersey, 2942. Third place, Michelle Brooks, director, 2527 in Nevada. Uh, fourth place, Nevada, sorry. Fourth place, Lauren Cliff, director in Nevada, 2397. Uh, Carly MacArthur, Star Consultant 2304 in Nevada. We have in fifth place, Neve uh, Jennifer Brent ben Benda, sorry, uh, Superstar Consultant 2283 from New Jersey. In sixth place, Melissa Henning, Superstar Consultant 2155 in Nevada. Nicole Wilson, Star Consultant, 2095 in New Jersey. Karen Fabio, Superstar Consultant, 2016 in Pennsylvania. Brandy Ife, sorry, my eyes are getting bad. <laughs> Certified Consultant in New Jersey. Rebecca um, Murray, Lead Consultant in Nevada. Lauren, um, I gotta expand my, it's cutting off people's names, sorry about that. Lauren Daughtry is a certified consultant in New Jersey. New Jersey and Nevada is kicking butt right now, you guys. All you other states need to start stepping in and kicking our butts back. 1651, New Jersey. Trenise Cook, star consultant in Arizona. Arizona's on the, on the map now. Um, at 1445, um, and Regina Kenyon, now lead consultant. She just promoted. Congratulations at 14. 43 Arizona and uh let's see uh 14th place so 15th place Shauna Cox star consultant in Hawaii 1407 and um let's do five more we'll do 20 Andrea Abel now lead consultant congratulations 1348 in New Mexico, Catherine Payne, lead consultant in Oregon, 1320, Susan Ferreira, superstar consultant, uh, 1299 in Nevada, Dale Pickard, star, excuse me, certified consultant in New Jersey, Karen Bonbar, Bonbardo, lead consultant in New Jersey, and Chris, Chris Strauss, star consultant in Nevada. Very, very awesome, you guys. Um, let's see. So far from the month, Brittany Levine has three new consultant, director from New Jersey. Teresa O'Brien has two, lead consultant from Nevada. Galen Peluki, that's a Hawaiian last name, that's beautiful, um, has two new consultants from Hawaii. She just joined uh, last month, that's awesome, um, from Hawaii. Shauna Cox has two new consultants from Hawaii. And Nadia Herrera sponsored her first person. She's here in Nevada. Congratulations. 
Uh, Carla Bridget has one from, oh gosh. I'm s totally going blank right now. What is MO? <laughs> That's horrible. Uh, Montana, is that Montana? Oh my gosh, I failed. Missouri, Missouri? Missouri, okay. <laughs> is it Missouri? I think it's Missouri, I think you're right. I, I fail. Um, okay, so, and Carla just promoted a uh, certified. Congratulations, Carla. Uh, Annette Mc, uh, McRae, uh, one new team member from Nevada. S uh, Sandy Con Con Colley, one new team member from Nevada. Nina Mancuri, one new team member from Nevada. Brandy Barnes from Hawaii, one new team member. So the rest has one. Um, Andrea e Ebel from New Mexico, Brenda Mills, one, New Mexico, Teresa Frolic, one, New Jersey, and myself from Nevada. Okay. Um, awesome, you guys. Very, very awesome. And um, I, I have to point this out because I hear it on a regular basis, and I'm sure um, a lot of other you guys do too, especially when you start to sponsor, you hear a lot of people like, say like, I have all this stuff going on. This is why I'm not able to run my business. And um, so I want to kind of give a shout out to uh, Teresa Frolic. okay? She uh, not only got 500 in in her first 15 days, but she sponsored somebody, but she also had surgery in like a couple, couple days ago. And, um, and she also opted in for a, a, a program that we're doing to um, in the next couple of, that we started today. And, you know, a lot of people would be like, oh, you know, I have a surgery that I'm doing. And that would be the reason why that she's not going to get her 500 in, that she's not going to sponsor somebody and that she's not going to participate in a program. So instead, she made it a reason why she's going to do it, you know. So it's all about mindset. It's all about perspective, you know. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. And um, really fast, these are everybody that, um, and this is a team thing. I know that Michelle does this herself. Um, anybody that I am a director, I'm your director. Um, it's the take two shooting star thing that I just started. I know um, Lauren Clift and Michelle Brooks have been doing this forever and I just started this um, because I watched them do it and I know that their teams love it. So I like to follow in the footsteps of awesome people. So I'm doing that. So anyways, um, everybody that hit 500 um, la by last night, um, I'm going to go ahead and, okay, so Brandy Barnes won the uh, take two uh, shooting star. So congratulations. All right, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and zip my mouth and give um, it to Michelle Brooks, director of um, the Shine Collective, and she's going to be talking about um, how she got 7,800 PRV plus, <laughs> like it was more than that, um, with her um, pre-orders system and mailers. And then I actually texted her this morning. Um, do you have it in my in your text so you know what I asked or do you want me to ask you again, Michelle? Let me know. Um, I have it in my text messages. Okay. Okay, so you wanted me to explain the four F's. What am I fantastic at? What have I failed at? What was my focus for last month and how did I move forward? Correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. So um, for the sake of this, uh, for the sake of this training, I would say my like the one thing that I am fantastic at is uh, getting PRV. I have, um, I joined four and a half years ago and in four and a half years, there's been six months that I haven't sold at least 2000 or more. Um, I'm currently just under 4,000 away from hitting annual sales for the fifth year in a row. So um, I would say that is definitely one of my strongest things. Um, one of the things, or failing, so you asked me this, and I'm like, I really had to think about it because I have what is called failure amnesia. <laughs> I try not to focus on the things that I fail at because I'm always trying to just focus on the things that I want to be successful at. So have I tried a lot of things 
and not been successful? Absolutely. I've tried mystery bags. They haven't worked for me. I've tried them so many stinking times that like it, they just haven't worked for me. I've never gotten more than five. I've tried to be consistent. It just wasn't something I could be consistent at. Um, I didn't earn any level of the girl with the flow incentive. That was the very first incentive that I didn't earn any level with. Um, and you know, so I fail at things every single day. <laughs> I, there's always things on my to-do list that don't get done. I've forgotten to pick up my kids from school. I have like, I mean, there's just so many things that I fail at, but I choose not to focus on the failures. Instead, I focus on um, what I'm fantastic at instead. Um, and then the uh, my focus of last month was honestly, it was just trying to keep my head above water. It was trying to keep up with all the thank yous and everything that was coming in when you sell, you know, in last month's case, almost 8,000 PRV, that was a lot of customers. That wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't like one person ordering $1,000. It was a lot of customers. I did have a lot of join conversations. So I guess back to the failure, nobody, none of those people joined, you know, but um, I focused on just gratitude and trying to be grateful for them picking me as their consultant. And then um, way, the way that I move forward, excuse me, every single month is I'm always thinking of the next month. So for me, um, I moved forward in October by focusing on booking parties for November. So one of the things that I haven't been doing as successfully as perhaps I want to be is booking parties. So that 7,800 7, PRV last month was one party I had that closed on the first of the month and it was $900 and the rest of it was all in pre-orders. So um, I, like, I really put a focus on booking parties and I'm about to close out my third party for the month. So it, you know, that was how I moved forward in my business. I got some new customers. So that was kind of cool. Can so I, can um, I interrupt really fast? Yes. I just want to like make sure everybody sees and is noticing that what you said in the beginning is that you don't, you don't stay there. Like it's all mindset. Like a lot of people will focus on the failure. And um, cause like you said, it's, you fail all the time. We all fail all the time. And there's a difference. Like when I talked about like Teresa that she could have focused on having a surgery and crazy that, that, Oh, my month's done. I'm, I'm, I'm having surgery. Like you, you could have said, you know, um, Oh, this didn't go right. And you know, whatever. But like your mindset is a, a, a growing mindset and you could have a uh, failure is a scary word. And it can make you go this way or that way. And you're, you choose to say, okay, that did work the way I liked it, wanted it to, but let's move forward. And so I just want you guys to really pay attention to the verbiage that Michelle's using because the verbiage she's speaking is also the verbiage that's going on in her head. It's going to really make the difference of how she's performing in her business and the results she's getting. So I just wanted to kind of make sure everybody's paying attention to that as well. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> No, that's fine. And well, and I'm at the point in my business too, that like back to the failures, um, I like I so far I've promoted to director like in eight months and I lost my title every single time. Like every single time I lost it. Um, and I could have been like, oh, poor me. You know, I lost my title again. And the first time, I'm not going to lie, the very first time, it was really hard for me. I took a major step back in my business, but I focused on what I was doing right and just kept trying to create that. And I will tell you right now, we are, um, my team is like, every time I go on my workstation, it's so exciting because like, it's like, is this real life? Is this really happening? I mean, we're already, our, our numbers are already better than they were last November, like the whole month. You know, it's, we're already better than August, um, April, May, June. Like, it's just so exciting. I love it. So it's, um, you know, when you focus on what is going right, it makes it more exciting for your business too. So um, it's just like, you know, that's just one of my things. I love to focus on the good. Um, but so let me um, talk a little bit about how I 
do my pre-orders. And if you're on my team, you've heard me talk about this so many times. So sorry, you get to hear it again. Um, but what I do is um, if you heard my talk from World Tour, like if you went back there, my pre-orders start with this right here. This is um, my LTO notebook. And this is LTO limited time only notebooks. And this is where I keep track of so many things. Like um, I know that we have Star Wars products coming out. I know that we have Marvel. I know that we have Disney. I know that we have Bring Back My Bar. Like all these things that we already know are coming out. This is where I keep track of that. And I, what I do is I have, um, this is gonna be like a lot of highlighting, but this is, so what I have is at the top, I don't know, can you guys see that? Like, can you see? So what I have on the top of my page is the LTO. So in this case, it is the um, NHL. Anybody that, you know, in Las Vegas, we are blessed to have a hockey team. So anybody that ever, like, talks about the Knights or goes to the Knights games or whatever, uh, they went on my list. So I write out their names. And I'm always keeping a checklist of sorts of anything that people mention like Disney anybody that has mentioned that they like frozen I write that down because we have had frozen products and guess what we have another frozen LTO so good thing I track that right so just those types of things when you're thinking about what's releasing this is where I track it and I have pages for everything some of them have released some of them haven't released and I keep it in here because I'm a pen and paper girl I could go back to my workstation and look at my sales and look at the past history but I don't do that because not everything has released yet and it's just easier for me to track all in one place and then I also use this for my follow-up as well so that's step number one. Anybody that is in here, I will, when an LTO comes out or I have information about it, I will text them like, oh my God, we have the Knights Warmer coming out. It totally made me think of you. So that's step number one. And one of the things that I started doing in um, September, at the end of August, and this is, I feel like this has made the difference, is I actually send an email out to all of my customers. Anybody that I have their email address, I send an email out to them. And in this email, I have um, the LTO that's releasing. I have information on like the day that it's gonna release, all those, you know, all the basic information. And I also include a Google form. And I'm sure that you guys have seen a lot of Google forms floating around. Um, but one of the things that I do on my Google form is I, um, I collect their information, like their um, name, phone number, email address, all of that stuff. I also um, have a little box that they have to check that says that this is a limited time only release and I understand that Michelle is going to do everything in her power to place this order on my behalf, but it's not guaranteed to me, and if she can't place it, she will refund my money 100%. And they have to check that. That way, it's, it's required. If you know anything about Google Forms, you know that you can make questions required. That one is required so that if I am not able to get something, it doesn't come back on me because I was there. I tried, right? So it happened to me with the um, Johnny Appleseed bricks. Oh my God, those sold out in like 20 minutes. I had no idea that they were going to go so fast, but I set my customers up with the understanding that there was a possibility that that was going to sell out. And you know what? The three people that ordered, that pre-ordered them, they weren't upset, they weren't mad, they were disappointed, but they knew that I was doing everything that I can to get that product for them because I told them I was going to. So I have my Google form and then I track all of that information and I try if somebody, um, like I posted on Facebook, I posted on, in my VIP group, if they comment, I send them my Google form because I want them to have all of the information that I am sending them. And number one, the most important thing is that they understand that it's a limited time only release. Okay. Then I use um, MailChimp, which is a free service up to 2000 email addresses. So currently I have like 600 email addresses in there and I use MailChimp because it's free. I don't like to spend money that I 
don't have to spend. So I use MailChimp and then you can, um, in MailChimp, you can create templates and yes, MailChimp, Simone, like monkey, M-A-I-L, like mail, email, and chimp like a monkey. And it's one word, MailChimp.com. And um, I use that one. I Like I said, it's free. And then you can also create templates in there as well. So I, had, I just have a pre-order form template that I have created. The verbiage is generally the same when I send it out. I just swap out the pictures, I swap out the link, and I shoot it out to my customers. That is it. And I will tell you, um, I, will, I had about a 40% open rate with those emails. Okay, I have gotten just simply from emailing my customers pre-orders, I've gotten three people that I can think of right off the top of my head that have never ordered from me before. I met like one of them that I can think of um, in the top, of, like off the top of my head. I met her in LA like, oh my gosh, 2017. And she literally never responded to anything that I ever sent her. But then she ordered something from September, from the Harvest Collection and the Holiday Collection and another one. And that was just because I emailed her this, okay? So what I try to do with my pre-orders is I try to have multiple touch points with them, okay? So everybody is going to check something different, right? So I have my email. And what's cool about MailChimp I have to share is that you can tell who clicks on your link. Like they will, it will tell you which link they've clicked on, similar to Constant Contact. You can tell what they're clicking on. So when it says open rate, you know, or you know, like 20 people opened your link, it tells me who opened it. Okay. So the fact that they opened it, guess what? That tells me, hey, they might be interested. So that might be somebody that I might text if they didn't fill out my Google form. That might be somebody that I text just to say, hey, I was thinking about you. How are you doing? Not, hey, I noticed that you clicked on my link. Did you want to order something? You know, but just like a way to follow up with them. So I have the pre-order, the email that I send out. I send out text messages to anybody that I have in my LTO notebook. Um, and I post on my Facebook page, I post on my VIP page, and I post on my Instagram. So I'm having five different ways that I'm trying to reach customers with these pre-orders. And um, I mean, I feel like it's very successful. I have people like the NHL warmer, I had 19 NHL pre-orders just from posting on Facebook and sending out the emails. I had 10 Villains Warmers pre-ordered. I had $1,000 in holiday, um, October 1st pre-orders. I had $2,000 in Harvest Collection pre-orders. You know, so it's been very successful for me. A lot of it is the email, but I feel like it's the multiple touch points that, that they have. And then one last thing that I do is I have my customer mailer, which I'm going to share with you right now. This is one of those things that um, that I uh, I tried and I failed and I tried again and I failed and I just couldn't figure out a system, but I was seeing all these people doing it. And so it was always one of those things, hmm, I really should try that. Well, last November, I decided to bite the bullet and just try it. And holy smokes, has this helped my business so much and that is because it's one other touch point that I get my customers, okay? So when I started it in November last year, I actually went back three months to September 1st. That was the catalog release date. And I sent it to everybody that ordered in September, October, and November. And I sent, I, I have a formula that I send out the exact same thing every single month. Okay, and I'm going to share with that, share you with that. But what I do is I also I track it in an Excel spreadsheet, and I just um, import all of. Oh, that's the other thing that I do. Back up to Mailchimp. I import my email addresses from my workstation into Mailchimp, and I also import um, my e the addresses from my workstation into my Excel spreadsheet. But how I do that first is I export um, the Excel. Am I saying that right? Like you export the Excel, like you have to do everybody that's ordered. But then I sort it for um, that column with last purchase date and I delete everybody else. So it's only my last purchasers that are at the top. 
that's how I start it. Okay. And then I track it. And then um, what I do for mine is if they don't order three consecutive, like um, if they, if they receive my sample three consecutive months and they don't order in that third month, then I do not send them a fourth sample. Okay. I just take them out. And how I track that is um, I will put the um like the month that i'm sending it and i will put in like what number mailer this is so if it's a one i'll put in a one if it's a two and so on but if it's a three then i highlight the entire row in gray so that the next month when i'm going in i just delete the gray ones out and i start over okay if they did reorder then i put reorder and then they're ungrayed okay but this is what i send out to everybody Everybody gets a Wama of the Month flyer. I, the, one of the reasons why I started doing this is I get the scent and Wama of the Month every single month, but I wasn't always giving out my flyers. So I felt like it was a waste of money, you know, cause I would, I would put them in orders, but then I'm like, well, I have half of them left. And then what was happening is I was just recycling them, right? And I'm like, God, what a waste of money. I have to think of something different and that's the reason why I started the mailers to begin with was to get rid of my marketing material. So, but what I found is that we only get 50 and you know, some months I can send out as much as 85, 90 samples. I don't have 85 or 90 brochures, but what I do is I create a rack card, R-A-C-K, a rack card on Canva. It's muted. I gotcha. You're muted. I can't hear you. I meant to meet somebody else that came in and I muted you. I apologize. That's okay. okay. Um, so I create a, a rack card on Canva of the warmer of the month. This right here is um, in Canva, which I use the free version. Um, so free. I like free. Uh, so I use the free version and this little box up here is just a frame that I have in the rack card. And then I just drop, um, save the marketing picture from the marketing tab and I just drop it right in here and I just change this every single month. And then I have the name of the warmer, the price, um, it says 10% off for November and then it has the description here and this is just regular paper. So I just print this out. So if you don't get the scent in one of the month, this is super easy to just recreate. Or if you do and you have more than 50 people you send them out to, this was super easy to recreate. So I do it this way. You see that I use a rack card because everything I send out is in just a plain ordinary white envelope. One stamp, that is it. Okay, so I, this is um, just what I've been starting to do. And then I also have another rack card that I use, and this is Michelle's fave. And I actually got this idea from Gaia. So she was doing this last November and I kept seeing Gaia like post this stuff. And I'm like, man, if Gaia could do it, I could totally do it. So I just like, I kind of copied what she did with this. And then what I do is, this is the same every single month. All I do is change these little icon medials to make them more festive, um, change the color of the arrow, drag and drop the pictures from the workstation, and print these out on my, on my computer at home to read to a page and cut them out. Okay, so again, it's just regular paper, nothing fancy schmancy. All right. Michelle, what are they again? I can't, we can't really- Rack cards, um, R-A-C-K. No, 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 like what's on that? You said it's oh. like your favorite what? Read this from that? No. All right, so <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to take off my glasses. It says, uh, it says Michelle's faves. And the first thing is this month's sample. Thank you for asking that, because that was something I needed to explain. Um, it says this month's month sample, and I send out the sample of the scent of the month. So I send it out in felt samples. This is a sheet of felt, 29 cents at Michael's. I just buy it, I cut it into 80 squares, and put it in the little dime bags. And so this like cost me a dollar one. Or like, no, not even that. How much? A hundred for a dollar. So it cost me like two cents, right? So then the scent of the month. And then guess what? Because it's a felt sample, it mails flat. 
So again, just one stamp. It doesn't like, there's not, no trick to it at all. So I do that. And then I have um, this month's fave. So in October, um, it was the NHL warmers. Um, and then this month gotta have, last month I was bring back my buddies. So I just dropped the little picture there. And then at the bottom, it just has my social information. So like my Facebook page, my Instagram, and then it has my, uh, my, my phone number on it. Okay, and it's the exact same every single month. I just change out the pictures and the description, and nine times out of 10, I'm getting these descriptions from the work, from our, my website. I'm not coming up with anything brilliant. I just copy from my website and paste it and call it a day. I like simple. That's big, and I think that's one of the reasons why I've been able to do this so much is because I've made it as simple as possible for me um, because I know for myself, if I make it too complicated, I'm not gonna keep doing it. So the other thing that I send out is I send out this, um, this thank you postcard. So with the thank you postcard, when I say postcard, just kidding, it's just paper. So, but I send out this, um, again, I made this on Canva and it says, thank you so much for making our business extra special. You are receiving this sample as a thank you for your past business. I will continue to send samples for three months for each subsequent order. Love Michelle Brooks and it has my, um, my phone number and my website on it. And this is what I send to everybody that is month one or two. And then month three, it looks like this, but it says a little something different down here. It says, um, uh, this is your last sample. This is your last three month sample. If you would like um, to continue to re uh, receive samples, please contact me to order. Otherwise, I will continue to follow up with you um, and you can order when you're ready. Okay, so I put these in all of my, thir my three month samples and I will tell you, I have a 40% reorder rate just from sending these as far as people reordering in the third month. So, um, which is pretty good, you know, I think. Um, and then anytime I also will send out anything, this is like back to my pre-order stuff, is I will send out anything um, promotional. So like when the NFL warmers were um, releasing, I sent out like a little postcard. It just had a picture of the NFL warmers and it said now taking pre-orders and um, now taking pre-orders. This releases on October 26th contact me you know if you know if you want to pre-order so they got this they got an email they got a text message you know layers like our like like the laundry love bundle layers right so this one right here is um what i sent out in november this is just gift ideas these are pictures that i took of my own products personal specials that i'm offering for my customers um, and then so i put the pictures here and then in the middle here it just says gift ideas um, room spray plus a hand soap is $14. And then I have a picture of a room spray and a hand soap. And then I just kind of put gift ideas here. And then the other thing that I did for November is I sent everybody a product list and then I put a little sticker. I have like, it's an Avery, what is it? Avery 5293 sticker that I just created on Avery.com. I slapped it on the product sheet and it says, please consider giving Sensi this year. And so I gave them a product sheet and then I will send that out or I sent that out and then um, anything else that's releasing, that's what I sent out in November. So um, in October, I sent out the NHL stuff and that kind of stuff. And then I feel like that is another layer that helps me with my pre-orders. I would have people texting me that, you know what, they pre-ordered the, or they ordered the warmer of the month, for example. They, I had three orders of the warmer of the month last year, last month. It was like a $60 warmer. I had three orders just because I let them know, hey, this is coming out. These are people that I don't necessarily have Facebook. You know, they didn't know, but they got my mail and they messaged me and they're like, hey, Michelle, I need that warmer for 10% off. So, um, but what I do after I collect all my pre-orders is I track everything and I write everything down. So I know that Jess has talked a little bit about um, like what she does when she collects pre-orders and enters them into the workstation. I do something very similar where just so I can get in and out and get on with my day. Um, I get 
I have anxiety like a lot of people do when they're collecting pre-orders. And so like today, I'm going to be really honest. I did not collect pre-orders for that holiday warmer because it is so limited quantity. It was giving me anxiety just thinking about it. So I shared it and I was like, if you want it, go on my website. I'm not taking pre-orders for this one. <laughs> so um, that's just what I did. And guess what? I didn't get any pre-orders because I told them had I done my system, I guarantee I would have got some. But for me, it was just like, oh my gosh, last year it sold out so fast. But then look, you guys, this is a, like a mindset thing. It's still available. I would have been totally okay with ordering the pre-orders. So lesson learned, right? Never second guess yourself because the second you second guess yourself, guess what? It's not going to sell out. <laughs> so, um, but what I do is I track everything and I enter everybody's name into my workstation and then I write it down because I'm a pencil paper girl and I write it down, write down their order and the order that they're pictured in my party in my workstation. And I write down all of the products. I have everything color coded. I know that the people that are highlighted in yellow, this is pink and yellow, um, there, it was yellow when I first did it, that, um, that they are direct ship. The pink ones are people that I'm having shipped to me, yellow is to them, so that way I can make sure when I'm checking out, I have a record of making sure who's ordering their direct ship and I know who did it and I write down all their products, so all I have to do is like wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, call it a day, all right? But the other thing that I do is that, I don't know if you guys know this, I, I'm sure you do, but just in case you don't, that if you enter in those dummy orders like we talk about, use up all the hostess rewards like you talk about, and you go to the payment screen, it actually saves all of your payments. Like it saves the payments in there, so all you have to do is enter in all of them except for the very last card, which in this case is mine, um, anybody that paid me cash, and then I can get in and out like, I had a thousand, like two, on September 1st, I had $2,000 in pre-orders. I was in and out in 15 minutes just because I had it down to a science. So the more prepared you can be, the more success you have at the end of the day. And that's what I have, Jess. Okay, I have some questions that they, um, so one, can you post- I could the see them coming up, but I have my glasses on, so I couldn't read them. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I got it, that's, um, I just, uh, blah, blah, blah. So can you post the verbiage you use on the sample mailers about the three months and also about being their last sample? Can you do that on the page? Can you I can, it? absolutely. Okay. I'll post and, pictures of it. Um, and what is your timeline to work on these and get them out? Each that is an excellent question. So that kind of varies. Um, it really kind of just depends on, um, you know, what I have going on. Uh, honestly, my November's just went out today. So I tried to get them out, them out by Friday. Uh, I ran out of magenta ink in my stupid colored printer and I could only order my toner cartridges online. So I had to place an order on Amazon real quick, wait for it to come in and and then, so those got out. I usually try to send them out by the 10th of the month though. But it, you know, I, that way I have um, like time to get the flyers together and I, you know, I have other things going on. So this usually takes me about two or three hours to put together from start to finish. But I also, um, I use labels. I export my, um, my information, my address labels. I export them to avery.com to make it simple. Um, I try to do as much, um, like duplicatable stuff as possible. Um, does anybody want to unmute themselves and ask any questions or make any comments? Um, somebody said, what shipping service seems to be least expensive in your experience, Michelle? What do you um, well, I use Pirate Ship. I got introduced that from Melissa um, because you get discounted shipping. However, in these, I just use a 55 cent stamp, like a forever stamp, that's it. This one looks different because I printed this one at the post office because I ran out. 
So um, I try to think ahead and order my stamps on the USPS.com because that's where you get the best deal is ordering them right from the post office. Um, like mailing services like Mailings and More and PostNet and all those places, they hike their prices up and I'm not I'm not about paying 10 extra dollars for stamps. So um, I try to, the most expensive month that I sent stuff out, it was like 82 cents a package. And I try to um, take in, into consideration, like that is 500 sheets of paper, so divided by 500, you know, and all of that stuff, the most expensive month, it cost me $82, but I made that back and then some on the commission. Um. I was just with um, someone that told me that pirate ship, that's what I use too, but I, there's a minimum of, of how much you have to, I don't even know what it is, I forget it. Like, there is a minimum, and it was $2.74, but um, because of the tax hike right now, it, or the price hike, it was like it's three fifty dollars right now. Yeah, so if you put something on there that's only like a $2.00, envelope and you're still going to pay that. So be careful when you're mm -hmm. doing pirate ship. If it's, you're doing a package, it is, and it's over, it's, it is the best way, but if, if it's less, you bet, take the time to go to the post office and just use yep. the stamp or what Michelle said to go to USPS.com. Yeah. Um, and I stamps. send out catalogs with two stamps. If I just put them in like a clear mail, or if you don't add anything to a catalog, you can send them out with two stamps. And I, I, Lauren told me that she's mailed them out with one stamp before. I haven't been brave enough to try that yet, but I, I do mail them out with two stamps. So um, like just because, just because other people are saying, I spent $3 to mail a catalog, that's insane, don't do it. Oh gosh, I learned the hard way. I went, it was like my first time ever doing like, I. I tried to send catalogs out to all my customers. It was like, I don't even remember, but I spent like a hundred dollars sending catalogs out and I was like, Bleh! I want to throw up. <laughs> I was like, Gosh. never doing it again. <laughs> yep. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Want to unmute and actually ask your questions? Melissa. That's beautiful Melissa Henning. <laughs> Stop. Keep <that> going. <laughs> so I have a question. Um, and I, I've asked you these questions a million times. A hundred times you've asked me the same question. No, I'm kidding. Just well, get me. ready for a hundred and one. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Tell me. Okay. So you had mentioned, like I knew about your, you know, cause I have the, I, I am fortunate to be on your team. So I get all the stuff. Like I already know all the stuff you had mentioned. Um, like I like your, the idea of your LTO notebook and how, you write down like the things that you see people are posting on Facebook. So, but I also know that you are intentional with creating relationships with people that you don't necessarily have relationships with like sensi wise. So that being said, people that you have noticed that are in your LTO that you might not have necessarily created a relationship with yet, how do you contact the people in your notebook that have never purchased sensi from you before or shown any kind of an interest? Do you contact them or do you, because I know you're very intentional with creating those relationships beforehand, but if you haven't done that, how would you contact them? That is an excellent question. So, um, you're, you're asking, so let me, let me re like make sure I'm understanding you. You're asking me like somebody that like, say I'm a friend on they're my friend on Facebook, but they're not a sensi friend, somebody that's never purchased from me before. Okay. So those people that have never purchased sensi from me before, if I see that, you know, that they're a hockey fan or whatever, I honestly, I do not necessarily message them when I see something's releasing because I haven't bit that, built that relationship with them. With those people, I, um, I will post on Facebook. I might tag them in it. Um, I might personally message them, like text them and just say, hey, I just wanted to say hi and not necessarily men mention Sensi and just kind of build that relationship that way. Um, but I... I, to answer your question is I don't, because I, I'm, I, I don't, because I mean, and maybe that's something that is, you know, that could be a hole in my plan, but I don't want anybody to ever think that I'm, uh, that I'm friends with them, that, um, 
because of that. But if they've liked a Sensi post at any time in my journey in four and a half years, uh, then I'll help, then I will contact them because that shows me that they're actually interested. That was a really good question, Melissa. Because you're on her team, Melissa, and you do get that daily, um, all the things <laughs> and communication. Um, is there anything that that somebody else wouldn't know to ask of like what Michelle trained on that may be helpful? Like the, something that you know that might be helpful that Michelle does or that you do in your business that um, you could share or maybe ask Michelle that maybe would be helpful um, to elaborate. Elaborate on. Does that make sense, Melissa? Yeah, um, I mean, she, Michelle talks a lot about um, consistency and being intentional with things. And so I think that um, to kind of build on the question and her answer, like I don't think Michelle would have that problem necessarily because she has been intentionally building relationships with people in four and a half years on Facebook. Like she's intentional with reaching out to people so that that situation that I asked about doesn't happen. And so for people that might not be on her team to know what intentionally building relationships looks like, it's not necessarily like, um, you know, Hey, I'm a Sensi consultant. What are, what do you do? You know, it's not something like that. It's just like learning about them. And she has a lot of notebooks. She keeps a lot of notes. And that's another thing that people might not know too. Like, how do you start to manage your business and your customers or even your team once it starts to get to a different size? Michelle uses a lot of notebooks and she writes things down and um, that helps her with her training, um, you know, like with her coaching and things like that. And also with like reaching out to her customers, she's know what's happened recently, like with her prospecting, you know, everything's written down. And I think that, um, you know, people that might not necessarily know that that's like super helpful. Like she has notebooks for everything. I do have notebooks for everything. I track everything. I track um, PRV ideas. I write down any ideas that I have, like ways to get PRV. If I hear something that somebody's doing or I see a picture on, um, like on Facebook or something, I save that. And I just have like ideas um, written down. I track, like I have my LTO notebook that I track. I have a, a prospecting, like people that I've talked about joining with. I have um, the, a composition notebook for that. I track my numbers daily. Um, I watch my team very closely so that I can see who needs to be celebrated today. Um, and like, I, I mean, I, I try to track everything, but one of the things that I can say for my mailers and my pre-orders, I've made it so simple that I also know that if it's not simple, I'm not going to stay consistent with it. So, um, I've tried to make it so simple that even I could, you know, <laughs> that I'm gonna, I'm, you know, I send out anywhere. Like I think the least amount of sample packets that I've sent out was like 65. And, um, and I, you know, I will tell you that that is, if you were to ask me a year ago, if I thought that I was going to be able to keep up with that, and I would have been like, no way, because I saw so many people doing stuff that was so difficult. I was like, there's no freaking way that I could keep up with that. Well, I'm glad that you shared too, because I mean, you, you shared even in the business for four and a half years and a lot of people are newer. So they're, they may, you know, if you're brand new and you're thinking, oh gosh, I have to do 65 mailers in a, you know, in a month, start where you can, you know, maybe look at some of the people that your, your, your best customers, it might be, you know, five people that have been supporting you the most in your business. You know, you might be brand new and the person that came to your launch party, maybe one person showed up and you want to just you know, really thank them for supporting you or, you know, it, it's, it's all about, um, you know, focusing on what you can instead of focusing on what you can't do. And yes. remember, I mean, there's things that I'm doing. I'm on, you know, I'm going to be on my 10th year that I have, I just started this past year. And, um, you know, so if you, instead of fo focusing on all the things like, like Michelle just said that she saw people doing, and she could have scared herself out of doing, you know, what she's doing now. Instead, she, she sat back, noticed that what they were doing and said, okay, what can I do 
that will benefit me and that what I will consistently do. So she sat back and said, okay, I need to keep it simple because she knows herself that if I, this is not simple, I'm not going to keep it up. And um, so you need to ask yourself what, what, and another thing is another question you need to ask is, you know, what do you enjoy to do? Because a lot of people love all the extra stuff. That's what, you know, what is fun to you? If you love all the fluffy stuff and that's what's going to keep it fun for you, then make sure you do that. But if you don't love the fun, fluffy stuff, then don't do the fluffy stuff, you know? So Yeah, so and at the same fluff. time, you want to make sure that whatever you're doing, especially if you're doing it for a lot of people, that it's income producing. So if you like all the fluffy stuff and you're spending all this money and it's going out, like I spend, you know, on a roll of stamps, it's 55 bucks. So I'm spending like $60, $70 a month, you know, on my mailers. And I mean, obviously not every single month, but like, you know, some months it can be that much. And if I'm not getting that back, then I'm wasting my money and my time. So whatever you enjoy doing, and if you're going to do it, make it like, make sure that you're doing it in a way that's income producing. And I would also say like, so for me, the reason why I started in November, I had a very, I was very intentional, like Melissa said, I, I do a lot of things with intention. And the reason why I started in November is because the fall is always the busiest. I knew that I wasn't going to have, if I were to start in March, I could, well, I mean, this year, obviously things are a lot different, but um, if I would have started in March, then my mailers would have been a lot smaller because, you know, I'm looking back, but I intentionally started in the fall because I wanted to start large because I knew that those numbers were going to get smaller as I went on. And um, so I wanted to reach as many people to start with and um and make it more manageable that way but i know melissa actually just started mailers last month and she started with just the people that ordered in october like start wherever you are and gradually add on you know i personally went back three months because that's what i wanted to do my intention was to reach as many people you know right out the gate and i had you know october was a pretty good paycheck so i wanted to invest that back in my business and so that's the reason why i started that because i had the money i wasn't going to have the money in february necessarily you know so i wanted to make sure that i did it in a month that i could afford it that i had the customer base and you know be able to move forward there and then tracking how like who was reordering you know, if it was indeed an income producing, because I told myself right out the gate, I'm like, I'm going to do this for three months. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I want to make sure to be consistent with three months. And, you know, that was, that's the one thing I can honestly tell you without a doubt. For me, I've made it so simple for myself that without a doubt, that is the one thing that I can say I've done consistently for a year that works for me. And some people have even said six months is usually, you You usually don't really see the real results until the six months. But if you, you know, it just depends financially what you can do. Like if you could only mm -hmm. stretch to the three months, then stretch to the three months. But six months is usually when you really start to be able to say, okay, this isn't making me money. Um, right. Simone, uh, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. I see your hand up. Go ahead. I can't unmute you. You have to unmute yourself, Simone. Okay. Uh, so I, I don't. I think muted some... now, but maybe she has oh. to turn up her volume. Oh, okay. There we go. It's not working, she said. Do you want to type your question in the chat, Simone? I can. I might be able to read it while somebody else is there. Anybody else that has another question? Yes, yeah. Nina Mancuri. Hey, Mama, how are you? Hey, good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. And you know I always pick your brain for stuff like that, for systems. <laughs> so I do newsletters also, I do them monthly. So my question is, since you do them a lot, I go through ink like crazy. Is there some place that you get your ink from? <laughs> 
Okay. So my, um, the printer that I have is, it's very large and it is a, um, like it has 4,000 copies per ink cartridge, but I do know that there is an ink service and I do not know what it is called. Um, Kim Polito, she uses this and she actually pays a monthly fee and they, um, they upload, like they give her, she purchases ink on a, you know, on a monthly basis. So, um, Melissa said that she has a stalker printer with, is that right, Melissa, is that what says stalker printer with HP that sends her ink? That's what it's, yeah, that's exactly what um, Kim Polito has. They send her ink because they'll track it when it's almost out. Um, personally, I have a very large printer, so I do use a lot of ink, but I also factored that into my um, cost management. Well, yeah, I used to have a, um, you know, the refill, those refill ink cartridge places, I used to get my ink filled from one of those, but I have not found one in forever. So I don't know where any of those places are here in the yeah, Valley. I get mine from Amazon and they are repurposed. So uh, uh, just to give you an idea of how large my printer is, uh, like a normal, like right from the factory, it's an HP printer. It's about $120 to buy my ink cartridge one and I have four of them. So I use um, Amazon and I use uh, Amazon Prime and I get them for $30, but they're repurposed and they last me, um, that, well, they're 4,000 copies, so. So I'm, I'm gonna share, I have a website called Supply, um, it's suppliesguys.com and I have a um, Brothers and it's also, um, a big one it's uh 2500 pages and um usually if i go to like best buy or wherever it's usually like 60 to 70 dollars per cartridge and i can get all four of them for like um i buy all four for um i'm looking at my receipt it's significantly different um less let me see let me get my they're only like $30 a piece or something like that. Um, just, just look up the supplies guys. Um, it's dot com, the supplies guys dot com. And there's everything is a lot. Oh, here we go. Um, 20 bucks a piece for the cartridges. And it's usually, yeah, I, I bought three cartridges and I spent $60. And they're usually about 60 bucks a piece. Supplies guys. Yeah, I can, okay, wait, I'll put it in the chat. Yeah, Melissa put supply, the thesuppliesguys.com. Is that what it is? Yeah, suppliesguys.com. Okay. And while you're typing that, um, Simone typed her question in. So her question is this, her, except for I know I can't read it because something about she joined in July and she wanted, she can't do at home parties right now. And she wanted to know what she could do to gain a bigger audience. She has a Facebook page and then she can see that they view her posts, but they're not as active as I'd like. And I don't have that three month purchase history. And then somebody just typed something in and I lost it. Okay. Oh, for her customers. Yeah. So Simone, the only thing that I could say is if you don't have that three month purchase history is I wouldn't go back that far. Like just start where you are. Start with maybe the people that purchased last month if you're interested in doing something like this. Um, honestly, I built my business on doing open houses at my house and I have not had an open house since February. Is that February? I think it was February was my last open house because of COVID. And so I've had to figure out how to rework my business. And that is another reason why I'm so grateful for my mailers because I am reaching my customers without having to have them in my home. Um, and then I also try to do Facebook parties and I do have a VIP group. And I will tell you that the views and the interaction is very deceiving. So just because people are not commenting or liking or interacting doesn't mean they're not paying attention. So you can see that they're seeing it. That's the most important part, not the interaction, not any of that. The most important part is that you're getting views and don't hang your hat so many on the likes and the comments as much as the views. So your reach is wider than you think that it is. Sometimes it just takes that consistency in posting. Like I will tell you, I just had an order. Now it was only two bars, but like, you know, that's, 
to me, it's not a huge order, but I just had somebody place an order on for two bars. I've been friends with her. Our kids played Little League together and her son's 19, my son's 18. They've played Little League since five. She literally just purchased for me for the first time yesterday. That was, you know, somebody that has been watching me, been paying attention to me, you know, I'm a sensei consultant, she knows that, but she didn't have a need until yesterday, right? Um, I had a lot of people pre-order the um, Golden Knights warmer, or even I had a couple of people order the Boston Bruins warmer that have never purchased from me before, but they're watching me, they're paying attention, right? Then they also, like I had one girl, she never ordered from me, she said, I went to high school with her, she ordered from me the Boston Bruins warmer and then a week later turned around and ordered the um, Villains warmer. I was so freaked out. You know, the, the warmer released on Thursday and then on Friday they're like, surprise, the Villains warmer is coming out on Monday. And I was like, no, I just had all these people pre-order the Golden Knights warmer. But guess what? 10 orders of the Villains, half of them ordered the, the hockey warmer too. So you can't, like you can't hang your hat on what people are ordering, but I promise you, they're watching you. So I would just suggest consistency is just being consistent. Don't stop what you're doing. You know, if you want to do the mailer, start with last month and don't go back that far unless you want to. You know, if you want to go and you want to send something to everybody that's ordered from you since July, start there. Everything takes time. We just, you got to be in it for the long haul. That's what I have to say. It's definitely consistency. You know, you cannot pay attention. You know, if you look at, this is what I always tell my team too. If you look at the interaction that you get on your other posts, you know, like you post a picture of your kids, do you get 50 people liking and commenting on those posts? You know, usually not. You know, usually you're getting the same amount of interaction on your everyday posts as you are on your Sensi posts. You know, but if you notice that a type of post is getting more interaction than another type, then try to post that way more often. I just heard something. I think I was on one of the Thursday night shifts and um, Jilly Sue, she's like a mark social media like guru. <laughs> um, she said to post like questions that people can ask, like, like ask questions. So yeah, people interactions, respond, ask interactions, polls, yeah. polls. Um, like I asked a question of like, what do you ask um, your kids after, after school? Like, I know what I talk to my kids about. I know, and I know how to communicate with them. I have very good conversations with my kids, but it was so funny to see how everybody wanted to respond, how to get, you know, and I loved it because people want to like share how they get information out of their kids. And um, I got like all this, um, the most like feedback than anything, but I got all this like, you know, com conversation going and I'm like, wow, like I need to start asking questions because <laughs> I'm going to get more interaction on my Facebook page, you know? Yeah. So Call to action posts, anything where you're asking them a question, ask for recipes. But I'm going to tell you right now that if you're looking for that, that Sensi post that's going to get the most interaction, it's not out there. Like, it's just, you know, it doesn't exist. It's like, it's all situational. It's how you ask it, you know, asking opinions. Like, you know, I have this warmer and this warmer, which one would look best in this room, stuff like that. Um, but really pay attention to the types of posts that you're getting the most interaction and try to stick to those types of posts. Melissa said the call to action post. That's exactly what I would say is, um, any type, but pay attention. Like if you're expecting those Sensi posts to get 70 likes, just like, or 70 comments, just like you're asking about your kids, what you do with them after school, it's just not gonna happen. Michelle Cohen's really good with that. She shared about how like, you know, she asked about cutting her bangs and stuff. I, I, I'm yeah. on her, um, I think I'm on her VIP page or something like that, but she's very good with getting like inter interaction and asking questions and things like that. So I think yeah. it's just, people like to talk about themselves and give their opinions. And so like starting conversations like that, and I'm not, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I am not the best person with marketing. I need to get better. I need to learn. I am like a dinosaur. I've been fighting social media for almost 
literally almost 10 years <laughs> and I need to get better at it. I'm, and I'm learning from you guys, to be honest with you. Yeah. The I more questions you ask, the better, like it has to have some sort of a call to action, like no matter what it is. And usually because of the algorithm, how the algorithm works is the more like the more, um, people are seeing your posts, like liking and commenting on other things, then those same people are going to see your Scentsy posts. You know, they're going to see it. So really, if you feel like you're posting and you're not getting a lot of interaction, think about how you're posting because, um, you know, people will scroll by a flyer, you know, but they're not going to scroll by a picture of your kids necessarily. So, um, excuse me. So think about how you're posting as well and pay, really be, pay attention to the types of posts, like, you know, everybody's saying that are getting the interaction and try to incorporate those as much as possible. Okay, well, if nobody else has any wants to- I, um, just going back to that, there are a lot of Facebook groups. Sensi consultants are willing to share so much. I mean, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot of groups that'll, I would say like with a VIP page, like silly, things that they post like themed um and i get a lot of interaction on my vip page just with the silly like comments or whatever or ideas that i kind of get here and there um, but a vip page it's kind of nice too because they they know that they're there for sensi so i really try to do the 80 20 rule and i just ask silly questions or like the um what is it called the ah something text where you click the middle button and people will comment or I'm like, hey, post a picture of like, we're all stuck at home. Where would you like to be post a picture? And people will start commenting on other people's, hey, where is that? Where'd you go? Oh my gosh, I've been there. Next time, blah, blah, blah. And they start having conversations with each other. So what I do is I pay attention to what posts I get interactions on on my VIP page because then I know that that's what they're willing to comment on. And I even had people say, you know what? I really like that you keep it really positive on your VIP page. It's an escape from all the crap that's happening. There's no politics, there's no negativity. You keep it positive, we're having fun. It's like a bunch of girlfriends hanging out. Um, and so, you know, I was like, thank you, because I didn't know if anybody would ever want to join, but I really appreciate you, you know? So make it a little like you know you're a vip and thank you and then i'll post like hey i'm making samples anybody want samples and then i'll post my samples you know my molds or my mail outs and people are like texting me hey am i part of that here's my address hey i want i want that you know so so a vip page for me has worked wonders and it took me three and a half years or three years to to even make one and i was like why don't i do this earlier so I would say that and say, hey, I'm new. Be part of my Sensi journey, be part of my group. I really want to share. I want to get to know you, whatever. And it's all my people that I know. And then you can slowly say, feel free to add people if you're having fun. You know, I would love to get to know more people, blah, blah, blah. So Michelle, that's can my you two cents. Post like a link to one of like a group page that you know that they they have like. Um, yeah, flyers and all flyers. that kind of fun stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. like a ton. Uh-huh. Totally. There is, and there's a new one the um that I really like. The um what the heck is it called? It's like an off uh, like it's real life pictures of stuff. It's not marketing flyers, it's yeah. real life pictures. Um I love that one because you can share those and they're like real life pictures of it as well. Mm -hmm. Um Yep, I totally steal those. I'm like, look at how pretty this Absolutely. is. I mean, they're putting it there for a reason. And I will tell you that, like, I mean, yes, people are sharing a lot of the same pictures, but they're beautiful pictures and they're not marketing flyers. So people will stop on those and not scroll past because they're not a marketing flyer. Awesome. Yeah, like I took pictures of like all of my warmers. I'm like, okay, this is how I decorate for Christmas. What can I do? And people are like, do this, do this, do this, add this, add snow, add trees. Add, I'm like, cool, thanks. And then they can see like <laughs> all the different warmers. Ha ha ha. So anyway. Intention, <laughs> intention. Intention. I like that. Okay, ladies. Thank you all. Thank you, Michelle Brooks. We have all these Michelles and Melissa's and <laughs> we love you all and all of your knowledge. Thank you for preparing all this for us, Michelle Brooks. And thank you for everybody that added all the awesome content and questions. 
We hope you all have a great week. Um, don't forget about tomorrow's Owl Consultant call. You can register in your workstation. And, and then also World Tour. You can still register for the for World Tour too. Oh, thank you for that reminder. Yes, um, virtual this year. So you can go even if you um, couldn't go because usually it's, you know, at a location. If you're new, we usually go somewhere around your location, but it's virtual. So definitely, definitely register because you get the best training. It's just a, definitely a, the best experience as far as content and... And it's only $11. Like, yeah, it's definitely yeah. worth it. it it's yeah, not that, that's, it's, that is so worth the investment. Yep, it's only $11, so... All right, we'll see you guys next Monday and also our Thank super you, Bye. Bye, have a great night, you guys. Bye. Bye.